Uh, hello, and welcome to the April ICAR President CEO Update. Uh, we're going to kick off today by talking about our community involvement. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've been working on recently is the uh, North Liberty Next Stage project and um, our contributions to that. Um, it's a multi-stage or multi-phase project that'll have a lot of different components uh, as they build out this this part. And we recently made an investment or a donation, investment into our community uh, through donation. Um, can you touch on that a little bit and give our viewers some information on that? So this is a project that we're really excited that ICAR is able to get involved in. It's one that we've seen a lot of our business partners and communities uh, members and nonprofits get involved in. So ICAR is really excited that we were also able to um, donate to the project. We were able to donate $10,000 from ICAR to North Liberty uh, Centennial Park Next Stage. And the really cool thing about this is that we were able to do that because we accessed a placemaking grant from the National Association of Realtors. Um, so if anyone doesn't know, NAR has like 32 different types of grants that local and state associations can um, apply for each year with specific projects and get reimbursed for if they are approved. And ICAR always tries to take advantage of those grant project opportunities. Um, and placemaking is one that it's a little bit stricter. It's got like a pretty specific scope of what you can apply for. That being said, it's much higher of fund options. So we were able to receive a $7,500 grant from the National Association of Realtors to go towards that North Liberty Centennial Park project. Um, ICAR was then able to contribute um, an additional $2,500 to get us to that $10,000 total. Um, so yeah, we're really excited that we were able to do that thanks to NAR, thanks to placemaking grants. Um, it's and not our thanks to you for writing and then submitting the grant. My favorite part is yes. the grant writing applications, but thankfully not too difficult, um, especially when we're able to partner with North Liberty. We worked with their uh, community relations department and they kind of helped us honestly answer quite a few of those questions. So they were a huge help for us in that process as well. Uh, just to expand on some of the phases that they have going on. So the amphitheater uh, is going to be the first phase. And that's going to allow opportunities for concerts and different types of events to be held there, which is going to be really cool. Uh, there's going to be a splash pad that'll be handicap accessible. Um, so take your children out there, go out there on a hot day. I think it'll be pet friendly. Uh -huh. um, so <laughs> take your dogs out there. Uh, another thing that they're doing is uh, there's going to be a year round pavilion uh, that'll be built, um, which will just provide a, another great uh, event venue for you know all sorts of things. And then uh, they're going to round it out with an honor garden. That'll be their final phase of, of that project. So really excited to see this project get off the ground and have it completed and just have more opportunities for things to do in the area. Maybe have a ICAR event there in the future at the pavilion. I think we absolutely I should. I think we might have to, yes. yeah. <laughs> uh, so to follow that up, ICAR is involved with a lot of different community organizations. Um, and some of them are big, some of them are small. Can you touch on some of the other organizations that we support throughout the year? Yeah. So this year, um, especially, we found ourselves uh, sponsoring lots of kind of smaller um, events that maybe don't get as much attention or that we haven't been able to um, highlight as much in the past. So the first one that we're really excited about is ICAR is sponsoring the 4-H food concession stand that is being built by City High, high School students. Um, for the Johnson County Fairgrounds. Awesome. So yeah, especially because we donated a trailer to City High yeah. in the past for their construction trades program. Um, we love being able to kind of partner with Home Builder Association and support their vocational trades endeavors. So to be able to sponsor the food booth at the fairgrounds will be pretty fun. I love it. Um, we're also donating to the United Way to support their literacy kits. Um, so those are available to any students within the Johnson and Washington County um, through the schools. We are sponsoring Girls on the Run, uh, sponsoring the Team Breast Friends Golf Outing. Which is always a fun outing. I've attended that a few have times. Have you? I have. Usually it's early in the season, so questionable weather, but uh, it's always a great day. This year we'll have good weather. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then we're also sponsoring the Iowa City Hospice, uh, their Walk for Dignity, which I believe we sponsored last year as well. So this will be our second year, awesome. um, but they are all about patients over profit. So exciting to be able to sponsor them. Yeah, just another fantastic organization that I think it's great that we support. Yeah. So yeah, lots of different little ways to get involved throughout the community. And that's in addition to 
um, the larger ones that you may see us do year over year. And that's would be like Summer of the Arts and yeah. those kind of larger. North, North Liberty Blues Fest, Iowa City Pride. Yep, Iowa um, City Pride, that one's Summer on the Summer of the map. Arts. Yeah, so I mean, many. There's a lot of events that we're involved in. And with those events come a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities too for our members. So even if you're not part of that organization and you want to volunteer, you can do that through ICAR. Yes, um, which is a great point. I think we even have like our next 1105 free lunch program coming up. So perfect, perfect ways to get involved. Um, keep an eye on emails because we'll have any kind of volunteer opportunities with signups going out that way. Good. Yeah. And 1105 again, um, you can volunteer your time or donate uh, food for that day's uh, meal. So you don't have to be there to donate or get involved. No, we have ways for you to get involved in the community. Just come find us at ICAR. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, so to wrap up this section, um, just so our members know, if there's any organization that we didn't touch on today that perhaps maybe you're part of uh, volunteering, you're on their board, whatever it is, um, bring that to us. And whether it's the board of directors or the respective committee that uh, would oversee that, um, we take a look at it and see how we can get involved and, and what we can do. Because, I mean, that's what makes realtors special is we support where we live and work and give back to the communities that, uh, that we serve and serve us. Always looking for more. So Yes, always. So next up, we're going to talk a little bit about the market and the data that we've been seeing coming out of the Iowa City MLS. Yeah. So, and I just kind of want to get your take on it um, as the realtor out there sure. in the market. So first up, when we looked at closed sales from last month, March, mm -hmm. we had 47% more closed sales in March than we did in February. So almost a 50% jump from what we were seeing then. Yeah. Does that kind of track with what you were seeing? It does. And I mean, not surprised by that with loan applications being up significantly this year. Uh, there's a lot of buyer competition out there in the market right now. Um, listings are also up a little bit. So buyers are seeing more properties available than they would have, you know, even a few months back or late last year, certainly from a year ago. <laughs> certainly from a year ago. In fact, um, that to me is like the most fascinating statistic right now is that so right now we have 980 active properties on the market, mm -hmm. and that is higher than we had at any point in 2023, um, which started in spring break. I think we might have mentioned that last month a little bit, but we're just kind of continuing to see the properties come on. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we're right in the thick of the spring market. Our spring market seems like it starts really early every year. I mean, uh, arguably, even in January. Uh, the market starts heating up as soon as we're into the new year, but definitely when you get into March, April, May, and June, hottest months in, in our market uh, by far. Do you feel like this spring is stacking up to last spring and what you see most years, or do you feel like it's a little faster, slower, different? I feel like it's uh, more like normal, quote unquote, Yeah. <laughs> if there is such a thing. Um, but definitely, you know, just there's a lot more opportunities out there, but it's not also a crazy market where you're seeing competitive offers on every single listing. There are, those are still happening, um, but it's just certain listings in a certain price range that you're seeing more competition. Um, but I mean, I've listed similar properties like back to back weeks and you could have a property that goes immediately and has a couple of different offers on it, or you have a property that sits there for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden you get a full price offer. There's not really a rhyme or reason for it, um, but there's just, it's promising for, for buyers and sellers right now. Um, buyers are hopefully not going to be priced out of anything, um, and sellers are still able to move, move their properties. So yeah, even with pricing, we're seeing the median um, list price in our market is at just under 310000 mm -hmm. and that seems to be right on par with where it was at last year. So it yeah. seems stable. It's not going crazy up, crazy down. Yeah, I mean, we went through that period of hyper appreciation and we're definitely cooled off to more of a standard appreciation annually. Um, I think prior to the pandemic, our market was like a 3%-ish average. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just above that right now and maybe like a four to five, obviously it's subject property dependent, but um, you're not seeing that wild period that we did, uh, which is good for everybody. A bit more talk. stable. Yes, absolutely. Um, another interesting data point that we looked at is when we look at condos compared to single family homes, single family homes are spending a median days on market of 27 days and condos are spending about 42 days on the market. Um, so not a huge difference, mm -hmm. but the single family homes are moving a little bit faster. Does that track with what you've been seeing? I think so. I mean, obviously, you know, every buyer is looking for something specific. 
but condos in our markets, um, a lot of associations have gone through some budget issues in the last couple of years since the derecho and some of the other natural disaster type things that we've incurred, hailstorms, a tornado, whatever it is. Um, so condo dues have been taking increases to offset the lack of reserves or to build those reserves back up from recovering from those things. Um, and so that's always something that buyers of condos look at is, you know, obviously the financial aspect of it and the dues play a big factor into that because if dues went from a hundred dollars or $150 and all of a sudden they're 250, 300, I mean, that's a decent amount of money that's being budgeted for a certain price point in a condo. So overall, though, it does seem like the market is moving. The spring market has arrived, but it is a little more stable than what we've seen in the years past. So what do you think is kind of attributed to finally having a stable, steady spring market? I think some of that can be attributed to the interest rates. Um, I mean, obviously, we went through a really low period, but now that low period is far enough in the rear view that people just know that this is kind of the normal market right now. Um, the Fed's given their outlook on the rest of the year. And uh, it doesn't look like we're going to see much of a decrease, but just more of a stable, uh, stable ship, stable, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, the rates are just going to kind of stay about where they are. Um, we'll maybe see a little bit of a decrease before the end of the year, um, but it's low enough that I think people are not put off by it. Uh, next up, we're going to have Shaner Magi Yines, uh, current IAR president, uh, also an ICAR member, join us to talk about the 2024 summer meetings and all that's happening with that. Yeah. Next up, we're gonna talk about summer meetings. Uh, with us, we have 2024 IAR president, Shaner Maga Yines, who is Very also good. ICAR member. <laughs> Welcome, Shaner. Thank you, Megan. And um, Tyler. Yeah, thanks yes, for joining us, Shaner. I've been begging Megan to come on the show for months now, and she finally relented. We finally there have a good reason to. <laughs> so why are you here today? Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, uh, summer meetings is going to be right here in the Iowa City Corville area in June. Uh, and if members don't know what summer meetings even is, it's one of our three annual events for the Iowa Association of Realtors where all of the committees will get together. Well, most of the committees, some of them, there's not room on the schedule, but most of the governance committees will get together. Um, so this is June 10th and 11th. June 10th is the kickoff. Uh, we're having a tailgate party theme. Um, so, uh, come in your best Hawkeye attire. I suppose we won't kick people out if they're not wearing Hawkeye stuff, but we maybe we might yeah. razz them a little bit. Um, but yeah, kickoff event uh, starts that night. And then, uh, like I said, committee meetings. I know that's not the most exciting thing for people. It's like, oh, committee meetings, geez. But if you've ever had any thought about getting involved in IAR, this is a great chance because it's a free event and you can find out very directly what does like the communications committee do? What does the risk management committee deal with? What does you know our pack deal with? Well, obviously that's how we know what that is, but um, but it's just a really easy way. Like I was telling you guys off camera, the summer meetings for IAR have not been in this area since 2010. So there's a lot of members that weren't even in the business the last time it was here, and it wasn't even in Iowa City Corville. It was in Riverside. <laughs> it was at the Riverside Casino. So um, yeah, it's just a great chance to. Again, find out more about what IAR does and meet other folks around the state and have a good time. And to be clear, who all can attend? Anyone who's a member can attend. Uh, again, it's free registration. Everything's up on the Iowa Realtors website. Uh, IowaRealtors.com uh, is the link. Um, you can just register there. Like I said, everything's free. So Okay. So we've got a kickoff event in the evening on that monday night correct governance meetings tuesday throughout the day Tuesday until about three o'clock and then what happens and then <laughs> we really have a fun event planned uh the last few years we've been doing an rpac fundraising event as part of summer meetings uh and we've just generally called it the rpac rally ride uh although last year i don't remember what we called it but we were on boats so it, it started as just you know literally like driving from one venue to another near wherever some readings was being held. Um, and then last year we were in Okaboji, so, you know, we figured we might as well be on a boat. Um, this year, we're doing a rally ride starting at 30 Hop, right down the street or up the street from the Hyatt Regency where the summer meetings are being held. So we're getting two buses and uh, we'll be going to several stops around the Johnson County area, you know, sort of iconic places like Sutliff Tavern and Lodge 76 and Shoeys and uh, some of those 
you know, five star Stables. upscale yeah. kind of places. <laughs> uh, I joke, but it's like they're just cool places, right? Yeah, I mean, are. just neat places that maybe some of our members haven't been to for a while. And uh, again, it's just a really fun time. Tyler's been on, I think, every one of them, yeah. right? Well, um, actually, I missed Stokoboji. Oh, that's right. You missed that. Yeah. The best one yet. I know, you missed, right? yeah. But it's just a really good time. I mean, it, it obviously supports our pack. All of your uh, investment to go, which is $350 per person, uh, goes directly to our pack. Um, and it is, even though it's an IAR event, it is acknowledged at the local level. So it counts for ICAR's um, you know, goal and so forth. Um, and you get dinner, drinks. There's probably some swag. I know there's some swag involved. Yeah. And I have to say, before I forget, thank you so much to ICAR for being a major sponsor for summer meetings in general and for the rally ride. Um, I mean, it, it, I think I would have been shamed if uh, <laughs> if ICAR hadn't stepped up. So I, I really appreciate you guys, uh, the board, making that decision and, and showing that support. But um, yeah, the rally ride um, is just tons of fun. I mean, you meet, you get on there, there's 80 people this year that we're reserving. Um, and there's, a, I think there's 25 left. Okay. Yeah, there's 25 spots or maybe 30, something like that. But um, but it's just, you know, you go into it thinking, oh, I know all these people, but you spend four or five, six hours with these folks. And I mean, it's just a really neat networking opportunity to, you know, obviously we often fall back on talking about real estate stuff, but to just kind of connect with people uh, in a fun way. So uh, I have no doubt that this one is going to be just as awesome as the first few that we've had. And probably even better because it's here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's in our backyard. How can you beat that? Yeah. So sign up for that. Uh, again, all that's on ourrealtors.com. I think there's a link right on the front page. And so Canvases. just to kind of wrap it up, you can do any of the three, right? You can sign up just for the kickoff event. You can go just to committee meetings. You could go to one meeting. Yeah, I mean, if you if you sign up for summer meetings... I mean, if you don't feel like having a good time at the kickoff event, then don't go. But I don't know why you would, why you would miss that, because it's free food and drinks and uh, a good time making fun of anybody that might show up without Hawkeye stuff on. <laughs> you know, somebody dares to show up in Cyclone gear, but um, or vice versa. If you're if you sign up for summer meetings and that's all you want to go to, I guess more power to you. If you don't feel like going to any committee meetings, I will say probably the highlight of the main day, June 11th, uh, we're going to have, I think we've got it on the schedule for an hour and a half, where we're going to have a session about what we're calling uh, best practices related to the NAR settlement, uh, the proposed settlement. Um, so that'll be one where, you know, we're going to try to answer the questions about, you know, if I'm a listing agent, how do I best let people know whether my sellers are doing cooperative compensation or, or not? If I'm a buyer's agent, what's the best way to deal with the buyer's agreement? So there'll be some real specific things that we'll go over at that session and kind of, because it all goes into effect July 1. Uh, so it'll be kind of a last opportunity for people to maybe ask some questions. Maybe there's some more tweaking, but uh, that'll be a really good opportunity and session for people to go to. So for not sure. to be missed. Right. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say when we started this interview or this session, today i'm just happy to for the first time in like a month have something that doesn't revolve just around the nar settlement because <laughs> that's all i've been talking about for the last month so it's nice to have a little reprieve from that and talk about other cool stuff yeah bring on summer meetings bring on summer meetings absolutely yeah <laughs> perfect do you feel like there's anything that we have not touched on that members need to know um just that you should go. I mean, there's really no reason not to. I mean, we're right here. And even even if you can't make it for the whole day for committee meetings, it just pop in for a while. Register and just come to whatever you can. I mean, nobody nobody will be upset about that. But if you don't come at all, we will be upset. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I will. You guys are nicer than I am. We'll be ni upset too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. It. Well, thank you, Shaner. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Great to be here. Uh, thanks for tuning in today uh, to the President's CEO update uh, for the month of April. See you next time.